following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Moses reincarnation today lecture relates to the different ways in which we understand reincarnation according with the science of Kabbalah in alchemy remember that when we mention Kabbalah we are addressing the tree of life and when we are addressing alchemy, we are addressing the tree of good and evil, which are mentioned in the book of Genesis, which is attributed to Moses, which in different lectures we explained that is an archetype that everybody has within and that needs to be developed in order to acquire everything that he wrote in his five books. To begin, let us see, related to reincarnation, the meaning of uh, this uh, word is uh, in the fourth uh, graphic that uh, states reincarnation from Latin re, which means again, and incarnare, to make flesh. Incarnare means, from Latin, in, which means into, plus carnis, which means flesh. So incarnation means to be in the flesh. This is very important to understand in order to comprehend the first graphic where you see Yod Elohim, Represented by the old man and Adam and Eve. And Yod Chava Elohim made unto Adam and his wife fleshy coats, skins, and clothed, clothed them. Genesis chapter 3, verse 21st. In Kabbalah, this verse could be interpreted in many ways. Because remember that we always state that uh, every symbol, Kabbalistically speaking, is interpreted basically in seven ways. In each way, each of the seven, in seven other ways. So we can have different interpretation. That's why the science of Kabbalah is very profound. <clears throat> we are going to talk about this uh, 
reincarnation, of course, related with the flesh. Remember that the whole problem started when Jehovah Elohim divided the hermaphrodite Adam into Adam and Eve. So, after they committed uh, the sin of eating from the fruit of the tree of good and evil, they were dressed after that in flesh, in coat of skin. In different lectures, we have stated that that flesh is Malkut, the very bottom of the tree of life, which, as you see, is divided into sexes because our physical body represents Malkut. And that division is related with the flesh. It is important to understand that Malkut is an extension of Geburah. If you observe the second graphic, you find the tree of life where we wrote in Hebrew and in English the different types of souls that are involved in this incarnation and reincarnation. Because as in the Mahabharata, where the great avatar Krishna explains that reincarnation is only a law for gods. In Kabbalah also, we find that reincarnation, or the way that uh, the book of Genesis explains it, is related, of course, with all the parts of God. And that in order to reincarnate, we need to know the science of Kabbalah and science of alchemy. Otherwise, we do not reincarnate. This is very important to understand because reincarnation demands different elements that we have to create in order to be submitted to the law. As you see here, we wrote the holy name of God, Yov, Hey, Vav, Hey, which is translated in the Bible as Jehovah. And that we, the Gnostics, translate as Yod, Hava. In the previous lecture, we explained very well, in the lecture of Moses, the mystery of Baphomet, what uh, this Yod Chava is. So as you see here, the three letters related with the holy name of God are Yod, He, Vav, in relation with the three Sephiroth of the first triangle of the tree of life. The other letter He of the holy name is related to the Ein Sof. So this is how you uh, see the name of God in Kabbalah related with the law of three, yod he vav and the source of the law of three, which is Ein Sof, the limitless. This is how you see the higher level of yod Chava, which is just universal God 
that Moses always points in the book of Genesis. Yod, He, Vav, the three sephiroth, Keter, Chokma, Bina, is what we call, and the Bible call, Elohim. The letter He, which is above that triangle, in the Ain Sof, Moses called it Ain Elohim, which means no Elohim. The Master Samael on the Or abbreviates Ain Elohim as A Elohim, taking in account that the letter A means without. So the letter He above the triangle of the tree of life belongs to A Elohim and Yod He Vav to Elohim. And this is the highest level of what we call Yod Chava in Kabbalah. The four of these letters make what in Kabbalah is called the universal soul, Yehidah. You see the word Yehidah written to the right in Hebrew. So Yehidah, of course, means unity. To explain better, we will say, is a multiple perfect unity. This is what Yehida means in Kabbalah. And in that world is where we find for the first time the chosen people that you read in the Bible. People because are human elements that we call archetypes. And those archetypes together relate what in the Bible calls Israel. And Israel relates to Chokhmah, the second sephira or the first triangle. And that Israel is a chosen son of Yehida. In other words, every human being has that Israel in the world of Yehida as a compound of archetypes which relates to Moses. Because among those archetypes is Moses. And all the personages that you find in the Bible, in the Old Testament. This is how you understand it and comprehend it in order not to fall into confusion. Because the Bible calls many times my chosen people. Israel. And uh, when you study Kabbalah, you understand that that chosen people are the archetypes which are Israel, which everybody has within, and that are the chosen ones that have the power to develop, to create through initiation Adam or the man into the image of God. That God, of course, that we're talking about here, abides in Yehida. Yehida is the world of the Messiah. So here is where we find the Messiah. And that Messiah relates 
also with a second sefer I call Chokhmah. It is very important to understand because remember that the Messiah also incarnates. Jesus Christ, the master of Eramentho that came 2,000 years ago, is the living incarnation of the Son of God. But understand that in Greek, that Son of God is called Christ. So that Christ is universal. Because that Christ relates to the world of Atziluth. Which is the world of archetypes. And also to the absolute. The Ein Sof. So the Messiah, Christ, encompasses the three primary forces. And the world of Elohim. Kabbalah, the Messiah. Below this soul called Yehida you find the other soul which is called Haya which means life the word Haya in Hebrew means life it's written there to the right of the Sephira Da'at Remember that we explained in the previous lecture how the letter Chet, which would you write higher, is the mystery of the duality. Hmm? Male, female. And if you observe, the word Yehida also has the mystery of the duality here because it's written with Chet, Yehida. So the mystery of the duality is in the absolute and also the mystery of the duality is in that higher. Higher is the expression of Yehida. This is how Yehida expresses itself. The mystery of the duality. So in higher is where you find in that the duality of Bina. But is the world that is ruled by Chokhmah. Because the first world of Atiluth is ruled by Keter. The first sephir are the tree of life. And the world of Haya is related with the world of creation, which in Hebrew is called Bria. But creation cannot happen if there is not father and mother, Abba and Aima. In Hebrew. Or we will say. The higher aspect. Of Adam and Eve. This that. Is what is called. The upper Eden. The heavenly Eden. Where you find that duality. That's why we wrote in Hebrew. That duality. Which is Yod. Which means phallus. And hey, which means uterus. Cosmically speaking. So, together, yod and hey is what in the Bible you find as ja. Written in hallelujah, ja. Hallelujah means praise. Ja. We praise Jah with that that relates with the throat. 
That's why it's a very powerful mantra. Because when we say hallelujah, yeah, we are really emphasizing the throat, the at, where you find the duality called ja. That ja is the androgenism. Two forces. In one. So Yehida and Haya are the two souls with which Haya initiates work with. Here, I repeat, the souls which we mention here is Ava and Aima. Elohim. The initiate has to, incarn to incarnate first Aima, the Divine Mother, in order to incarnate Abba. But both Abba and Aima, father and mother, belongs to the Sephira Bina, which is called understanding. And they are the ones that represent the two polarities that we need to work with in order to bring down the Messiah, which relates to Chokhmah. In Kabbalah, many Kabbalists think that Chokhmah is the father in the Hat, and Bina is the mother. Wrong. Chokhmah rules the world of creation, Haya. But he does it through the duality of Bina, which relates, of course, to the Holy Spirit. Not only in Judaism, but in Christianity and many other religions. We see how this Bina relates to the duality. The higher longing of any initiate is to incarnate that duality in order to have access to the world of Atziluth and incarnate the rest of the parts of that higher being which is universal multiple unity. When you enter into the world of Yehida, you don't find any personality. It's universal, has no individuality in the sense of one person. All the beings that achieve that level are one in Yehida. Haya expresses that Yehida as well. Below, as you see, we find the seven inferior sephiroth, which make what we call the true man, the true Adam. Ruach is the thinking soul, is the spirit in Hebrew. That Ruach is Hesed, mercy the outcome of the duality in each one of us. Because in the same way that we have in the interior of our monad, the trinity above, the first triangle, and the absolute, the of, as well we have chesed inside of us, not incarnated, but up there, our own particular individual spirit or angel, if you want, or God, if you want, because the sacred name of this chesed is El, and El means God. That is the first Adam that 
is created in higher. And uh, at the same level of the Ruach, we have Neshama, which is called the spiritual soul, related with Geburah. This is what we call mercy and justice, Chesed and Geburah. And the last soul, which is called the animal soul, is below. Nefesh, as you see, at the very bottom of the tree of life, related with the Sephirah Malkut and Yesod at the same time. When we talk about Yesod and Malkut, we do not uh, see how we can lose the unity of these two Sephirahs. Yes, Oren Malkut. Because they are really one. But they are separated because of the fall of Adam. Malkut is a female aspect. In the very bottom. And that female aspect is what we call the physical body. We always state in many lectures that the physical body is feminine. Even if that Femininity is polarized masculine or feminine in the physical world. And Yesod, of course, is a vital body, the superior aspect of the physical body. Malkut is the inferior aspect. That's why Malkut and Yesod are one. And they are related to Nefesh, which is called the animal soul. So when we talk about the returning of the souls in the earth, we always point at, at Nefesh, the lower part. Nefesh, of course, is already in the flesh. Everybody has it. But uh, Ruach, we also have it as an element that is incipient. Related with the thinking aspect of it. Why? Because if you see Ruach here, related with Chesed, is below, below Netzach, which is the mind. Many Kabbalists, they state that Netzach relates to emotion. Ron. The very word Netzach means forehead. And relates, of course, to the mind. Every, any Kabbalist, which is an initiate, could see that easily. And that's why Ruach affects Netzach, which is the mind. That's why it's called the thinking soul. While Neshama is an emotional soul. And we see there Hod underneath Geburah. So, Hod is emotion, and Etza is mind. This is how we see it. And below, of course, is the almighty power of God, Shaddai el Chai, which is Yesod, and Malkut, which is the physical body. So, in the lectures, or in the previous lecture, we told you that the skin relates to the sense of touch. All the skin. But we use the sense of touch through the hands. And when we perform the sexual act. Because the most sensitive organ of the sense of touch is the sexual organ. That's why in Kabbalah we say Yod means phallus, the sexual force. Because the phallus received the strength of Geburah. 
which, as we explained, is the power of the serpent. That serpent, when descending into Malkut, becomes the flesh that we have, the skin. The power coming from Geburah is called Aleph Vav Nun Aun. And is pronounced on in Hebrew. On virility. The name of the master Samael, the ruler of Geburah, is Samael on Veor. Now, there is another mystery here that we are going to unveil, and it is the second of the third name of Master Samael on Veor, which is Veor. Usually, if you write Veor with the letter Aleph, means and light. But in Hebrew, you find two A's, Aleph and Ayin. And instead of putting Aleph, you put Ayin, <coughs> and then you said, and skin, and the skin. And of course, it makes sense, because the virility of Geburah descends through Hod in the skin which is also or. You see, it sounds like light, right? But light is with a left. Or is light. While skin, you pronounce the A with your throat. Or. It sounds the same, but it's not the same. One is skin and the other is light. So if you write with Ayin, the name of Veor, means and the skin. That's why the mystery of the name of the Master Samael on Veor is the unveiling of the power of the virility in the skin. And Samael rules Arius above and a Scorpio below, which relates to Yesod. Now listen to this. The power of Geburah is the might of the blood. Because Geburah relates to Tifereth, which is the heart. And Geburah is the might of the blood in relation with the circulatory system. That might of the blood is what we call on the power of sex, the virility that descends through Hod into Yesod, but acts through the skin. Because if you cut your flesh of your skin, you will see that the blood emerges. That is the power of Geburah, Samael. And of course, the man has a sexual virility, erection, when the blood circulates in the flesh, in the skin. So, on the R, the power of the sex in the skin, in the body of Malkut, in other words. That's why we stated in other lectures, if you want to escape from Samael, you have to take all the skin of your body and you have to cut your blood and your flesh and then you will be only bones. But you need the flesh which is related with Geburah. You need the skin that is related with Tifret in the physicality in order to have the power of sex. In other words, that virility in the skin is in everybody. Because this is how we explained in the previous lecture. When we make contact, when the two skins are in contact, we see Ida Pingala, the two serpents, together. Working with the skin, working with the flesh, working with the blood. This is what is called alchemy. And that's why we say, when we see Malkut, Nefesh, the animal soul, 
we understand that the one that gives the strength and the power is Samael from Geburah. And of course, the maximum power of the skin, the flesh, and the blood expresses itself through the sexual organ. This is how you see on the R, the vehicle of Geburah. And of course, that's why Samael, the Kabbalah, the book of Sohar, related to Nefesh, the animal soul. Not only in the human level, but in all levels. Animals, plants, minerals. Because it's a logos. So from that point of view is how you understand the word reincarnation. Because we talk about the flesh, the skin, the blood. How we take all of those forces, sephiras above, bring them down, and incarnation. Bereshit, bera Elohim ad ha shamim veat haretz. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In Kabbalah, heavens is Adam. Because Adam Kadmon, the primordial man, relates to Yehida. That primordial man was in the beginning androgynous, as you know. By going into the next uh, graphic, we wrote, Adam Kadmon, the primordial man, the first physical Saturnian protoplasmic root race, and the second, the Hyperborean solar root race, were androgynous in one body. The third, or Lemurian lunar root race, is called Adam Eve because they were hermaphrodites or Yod Hava, in other words. They, these hermaphrodites separated, they were divided into Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel, and produced the fourth, which was the Atlantean terrestrial root race called Seth Enosh. This is how, according to evolution, those archetypes started to form what we call the terrestrial round in which we are right now. Really, this root race in which we are right now comes from Seth Enos, Seth Enosh. But we have to understand and comprehend all of these uh, attributes of archetypes to, to understand the law of reincarnation. When you read the Bible, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, he's talking about Adam and Eve. Because when we said heaven, we are talking about the archetypes that in their conjunction form Adam or Israel. And the earth is that primordial matter called Akash in Sanskrit. So heaven and earth relates to Adam and Eve in a very higher level. What we call higher. In other words, if we go into the second graphic, we will say that in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve, or the two polarities of Haya. This Elohim is the first triangle, that in the beginning, together with the Absolute, the Ein Sof, created Elohim, which is El and Ela. 
in Haya. Ya, in other words. And of course, as that is how we understand those archetypes called Israel descend into Malkut. Because we need to develop. If we want to incarnate all of those attributes of God, because only God incarnates, only God reincarnates, or as the Bhagavad Gita says, only the gods reincarnate. We will say only the archetypes reincarnate. The ego that we have within is animal, return. But we are not talking about that. We're talking about reincarnation, which is a very higher law, law related with alchemy and Kabbalah. In order for us to have the right to incarnate all the attributes of God, we need to develop all the archetypes of Israel. And that's why it is written that in the beginning, the earth, Malkut, was formless and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. But the spirit of the Elohim was floating, the Ruach Elohim was floating above the waters. And it is with us. We have our own Elohim, Ruach Elohim, which is our own spirit, floating above. This is why we call our monad, our inner God, our inner angel. Everybody has it within. It's floating above, waiting for us to start doing the work with Malkut. Because our Malkut physicality is formless and void in darkness. And in order to make light, we have to know how. Because the next step of the book of Genesis says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Why is two times mentioned light here? Because one is the masculine aspect and the other is the feminine aspect. Let there be light says the masculine aspect. And the feminine says, and there was light. In order for understanding here down, we will say, it. the man says, I want a son. And the woman says, here is your son. After nine months. Right? Same up there, in the light. There always two. That's why the one that says that is Haya. The power of the duality. But is Bina. Because Bina rules Yesod. And the power to make life is in the uterus and in the phallus. Simple as that. In the sexual organ. That's why, in order to make light, we had to develop the archetypes and to build inside of us the solar bodies, the astral body, the mental body, and the causal body, in order to make or to trace a line of relation between God and us. And it is only possible by working with Adam and Eve, Haya. Because all the archetypes descends into Ruach, into Neshama, and finally into Nefesh. They are in darkness. All of us have that. If we do not develop the archetypes of Israel, or the children of Israel, or the people of Israel, which are the chosen of Yehida, we do not reach the level of Adam. Adam is a word that represents, letter Aleph, the tree, Sephiroth, or the tree of life, the first triangle. That's Aleph. We explained that in previous lectures. The letter 
Dalet of Adam represents the throat because that is a mysterious sephira, which is the fourth with which we can create. Remember that the letter Dalet is the number four. The letter Dalet hides the mystery of Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey in the throat. That's why in the beginning was the word and the word was with, with God and the, and the word was God. This is the beginning with God. Everything was made by him and without him nothing was made that was made. So, as you see there, that's why we always state in many lectures that the throat, the mouth, relates to Adam. Because Adam is the only one that can explain this through the throat. Other animals meow, bark, but Adam talks, speaks. The mouth, the throat. This is how we have to see it. Adam. The next letter is the letter Mem, which symbolizes water. The primordial water. The Akash, which relates to the throat in the sexual organs. Adam. That's Adam. The one that has power. Not only in the throat, but in the sexual force. In the skin. In order to develop that, Adam, the hermaphrodite, needs to be divided into two sexes. Because then the skin attracts the forces of all the sephira, and we start working with it. Now, Malkut, our physicality, is related with the ten sephiroth in the following manner. Keter relates to the crown, the top of the head. That's why uh, in many religions they cover that crown. The kippah, the turban, and many other ways to cover the crown, which is Keter. Which is that sephira that unites our physicality with the absolute, with the insof. That's why in different lectures, when we talk about the crown chakra, we say it is related to Keter, it is related to the Ein Sof, to the Ein Sof Or, and to the Ein. All of those sephirath. Because through Keter, the crown enters the forces of the absolute in any human being. Chokma relates to the right side of the brain, to right hemisphere. Binar to the left hemisphere. This is where we have the trinity, physically speaking, in potentiality. That, as we explain here, with the throat. Now, physically speaking, chesed relates to the skeleton, the bones. And Geburah to the flesh, as we were explaining here. And Tifereth, <coughs> the heart, the blood. Blood, Tifereth, Geburah, the flesh, and Chesed, the bones. But inside, inside the body, Chesed and Geburah are related to the right and left lungs. That's why we call Chesed the spirit and Geburah the spiritual soul. They relate with our lungs. When we breathe, we are inhaling those powers or putting into activity Chesed and Geburah and below Tifereth. I don't want to repeat the relationship of the heart with the lungs because everybody knows that. How the heart receives the 
help of the oxygen that we, that we breathe. So when we think about Hesed and Geburah and the heart, you understand your lungs and your heart. And then maybe if you are smoking, you stop smoking in order to stop polluting your blood and fight for the environment because we breathe small here. Now inside the body, we find Netzach and Chod, which are related to the liver. Netzach, remember that the tree of life is always related with the spinal column in the back. The liver, Netzach, and Chod, the spleen. And below, inside the body, again, Netzach, the right kidney, Chod, the left kidney. So all of these sephiroth are related, of course, as you see, with, this, with the blood as well. That is received through the heart, because the liver and the spleen relates to the blood as well, impure blood. And the kidneys are the power that receive from the Zion Chod in order to create the sperm and the ovum in the male and female, respectively. That's Yesod. And finally, the physical body, which we are talking about, related to the skin. So this is how you see the tree of life in your physicality. That's why if somebody asks, and how are you going to incarnate the superior sephiroth in your body? By working with alchemy, with the energies of your chakra, crown chakra, your brain. The crown chakra relates to the pineal gland exactly in the middle of the brain. And then you have the right brain, the left brain, Chokhmah, Bina, the lungs, the heart, kidneys, or liver and spleen, sexual organs, and the body. So this is how and why we have many exercises in which we put in activity the different plexuses, or plexi, that relates to these forces of the sephiroth in the body. In the exterior aspect, Kabbalists say that the and Hod are related to the legs. And it's true. Because the legs are holding the temple of God, which is the physical body. The feet related to Malkut, the assault with the sex, and of course, Chesed and Geburah with the two arms. This is how you see the Sephiroth in your physicality. And this is how you have to study in order to understand. You see in the left graphic here, you said, and they were both naked, Adam and his wife, and were not ashamed. And you see there the synthesis of alchemy, the sexual act. They were thievish. Because when you know that all the sephiroth descend into your malkut, into your physicality, and you are full of energy in different aspects, if you transmute that, then you are not ashamed because you are taking advantage of the force that descends in your physicality. And here you understand why it is necessary to have physical body and only to do the work. That's why the physical body in alchemy is so the mixture because it contains all the forces of heaven. As the womb 
contains all the forces of heaven that creates a new creature. That's why Malkut is called the wife of Adam. And Adam Kadmon represents from Yesod above all the Sephiroth that we need to incarnate. That's the right word. To incarnate means to make flesh those forces in us. This is what we call to be born again by the power of the Ruach, the Spirit, and the waters. The creative waters of Genesis. In many religions, this dissension of Ruach, Spirit, into the water is symbolized by the baptism. No matter what religion, they always have that ritual in which a person already old or young is receiving the waters as a symbol. But the real assimilation of the waters of life isn't the sexual act. This is what the gospel of Christianity called to be born again. Remember that again means re. Of course, we are born here with this physicality related with the 10th Sephiroth. We need to be born again. But that birth is completely alchemical. Nothing to relate with beliefs. Because a woman, here physically speaking, if she wants to be pregnant, he needs a man. She can pass all years believing that she's pregnant and she is not. Because in order to be pregnant, she needs a man in the sexual act. Same this woman. This woman called Mater, Malkut, physicality. You need to make it pregnant. If you are a man, you need a female. If you are a female, you need a male. But through the alchemy, this is how the virginity is born in us. Because right now we are fornicators. Meaning we perform the sexual act as animals. And while we perform the sexual act as animals, mean with orgasm, all that light which is condensed in the sex leaves. And we are submitted to the law of return. The law of death, in other words. But if we want to incarnate the Lord, we have to be in chastity. Knowing how to transmute between husband and wife the sexual force. And this is how the spirit is born inside of us. <clears throat> so, in the next graphic, which is the fifth, where we read the explanation of reincarnation, in the very bottom is explained another verse, quotation of Genesis. Chapter 6, 3. Where we see how Adam and Eve were expelled from their purity that they enjoyed when they were hermaphrodites and that they started losing it when they were separated in sexes and they performed the sexual act as animals. It is written in Yodhava said, my Ruach, spirit, shall not always remain eternally within Adam. For in their erring, they are flesh. Beshagam. Thus, his days in Malkut, in his physicality, shall be a hundred and twenty years. In other words, when we receive this physicality, we err a lot because we use the energy that we receive in our physicality for foolishness. 
beginning with sex. We fornicate like animals. In other words, we eat of the forbidden fruit like animals. And we make of the apple tree a big fist. Not only one apple, many apples. In that way, we are then expelled from eternity, from everlasting life. Haya is life. And if we fornicate, if we expel that life, not only through the sexual act, but through any of the three brains that we have, intellectual brain, emotional brain, and motor instinctual brain, we lose the energy. And that's why we get old. Because we are expending the energy in order to make money. And when we're old, we need that money in order to get health. This is what the Dalai Lama says. People in this day and age, they work for money. And when they get the money, he has to use it in order to be healthy. It's very stupid, of course. And the ones that are making business with it are, of course, those that uh, know how to uh, how you call to make of us a butchery butchers because doctors in this day and age they know how to make surgery but they cannot heal otherwise everybody will be immortal sooner or later we die no matter what medicines we take no matter what exercises we do because we are ex Spending the energy that we get from the physical body. So that's why it's written there. My Ruach, which is the force of God in us, shall not always remain eternally within the Adam physicality. Because he is always using the physicality for foolishness. Therefore, 120 years. That was written when humanity was already in the Atlantean period, after the universal flood. Now, we are not in the Atlantean period, we are in the Aryan root race. If somebody lives 100 years, we'll be in the internet, Facebook. But more of us has only as much 50. Those that pass 50 give, have to kneel and give thanks to their own particular ruach that, they, that he is allowing to you to live more years in your physicality. Because the average of life now is, or the span of time is very short. <coughs> so, this is how you understand What reincarnation is. Now let us talk about Moses. That particular archetype. That everybody has within. When I say this. is because I saw my particular archetype within me. But thanks to the master Samael Omveor. I didn't fall into the mistake. Of thinking. That I was the reincarnation of Moses. Even though in certain level, I was. But the reincarnation of my own particular individual archetype called Moses. Not the master Moses that came many thousand years ago and that came to teach. Everything related with his archetype. That master is immortal. Lives in the fourth dimension. Achieve resurrection. Now, what we have to be concerned is not with that master, which is a great avatar, a great messenger. We have to be concerned with our own particular individual Moses. And that's why the book of Genesis is written in the other books that he wrote. 
for us to understand and not to fall into the mistake that uh, other uh, initiates that are saying that they are the reincarnation of Moses, I know that it appears there that the reincarnation of Moses because somehow they have visions related with their own archetype and they don't understand. Related with the tree of life, Moses is related with Netzach and Elias to Hod, which are called the two witnesses or the forces that give force to the sexual energy. But also in relation with the souls that descend into the earth, Moses is related to Neshama. Moses is that archetype that brings together all the archetypes of Israel at is written in Exodus. But in order for you to have that privilege to develop Moses and to see your God, your inner God face to face, that Moses has to be an adult. That archetype is the archetype that chooses the direct path. Because some other initiates that reach mastery, they push Moses aside. And they prefer to enter into nirvana, into paradise, and not to descend from the Mount Sinai below. That archetype is the one that when he sees his own inner God, his inner God says, well, you developed thanks to the science of alchemy. But now you have to descend into Malkut and to bring up all the other archetypes which are slaves in Malkut. This is how you understand why in Kabbalah it is stated that the only one that can see God face to face is that archetype. Do not fall into the mistake of thinking that only that master that came many year, uh, thousands of years ago is the only one that can see God face to face and the rest of the prophets' avatars cannot. If they develop their own Moses, they can see face to face their own God. And to do what they have to do. This is how we understand it and how we have to comprehend it. That's why it is written there in that graphic that you are looking at at the very moment that when that archetype, Moses, which relates to willpower, is facing his own divinity within, it's written, and Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Why? For he remembered what had happened to him before, he remembered his sin and covered himself in shame, similar to Adam's behavior after the sin. In quotation is written, I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Genesis 3.10. So hard. That means that when Adam discovered what the tree of good and evil is, which means his own physicality, his own skin. You see, we always said the tree of good and evil is a sexual energy, is a, is a sod. It's true. But if you inquire in your physicality, your sexual organ is covered with flesh and with skin. And that is malkut. And that's why in Kabbalah always refer to the tree of life, Yesod and Malkut. But if you don't understand, you, you, are, you fall confused. But it's easy because the power of Yesod is received to the flesh and to the skin, thanks to the blood that is circulating. That's the tree of good and evil. When Adam used that power with his Eve, Eve his physicality, Eve, his sexual organ. So Adam is the brain. And he remembered the sin. 
And who caused that brain to receive that knowledge of evil was the sexual organ called Eve. And of course, in order to receive that knowledge, he performed the sexual act with the womb men. With that man that instead of her phallus has a womb. Womb man, war man. This is another man, but womb man. Means it's another physicality which is more feminine than his physicality because has a womb. That's a woman. So in order to sin, he was making a sexual act. So in other words, the two of them, the male and the female, committed the mistake of fornication. And that's why both of them fall. They fell into sin. Because of Eve, their sexual organ. You see here the relationship about Eve. That's why when we talk about Eve, we have to see it in different levels. The physicality, Eve, the sexual organ, Eve, in either bodies. In both bodies, I mean. Uh, and also Eve represents the woman, and Adam represents the man in separation. But also represent the root races. Inside also, and alchemically speaking, Adam and Eve is also related with other symbols that we explain in different lectures. This is how we have to understand why it is stated that we are children of Adam and Eve, the two polarities, above and below. So here we are reaching <coughs> fear. Aire, it's called in Hebrew. It says here, the fear of Yod Chava is the beginning of knowledge. Remember that, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The fear of Yod Chava is the beginning of knowledge, wisdom, and chastisement. That the fools have despise. That means the direct path. Those that wants to develop, how to develop that fear, that awe. Awe. It's how you say it, right? To Yod Chava. When they are in a sexual act, of course. Because fear relates to Gebura. There are many types of fear that you can feel. Fear of losing what you have. Fear to the unknown. Because you don't know. But this type of fear is the fear that you feel when you are in the very sexual act. And that you know that the power of God is there. Expressing to, through your sexual organ. All the power of the tree of life is there in that moment. Between good and evil. Your skin becomes the tree of good and evil. Because through the skin you decide to reach the orgasm. Or you decide to withdraw from the sexual act and to transmute and not to, to, to spill the force that is dealing in that moment. That's the fear that the commandment talks about. Another fear said, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of Yod Chava and the knowledge of the holy ones, Bina. This is a translation. Because... Holy ones is Kadoshim or Kadeshim in Hebrew, plural. Kadosh is singular. But when you find the letter Mem final at the end of the word, it's plural. So it's referring to of the holy ones Bina, which is translated as understanding. In other words, when the couple are in the sexual act, that's the beginning of wisdom. Is the fear of Yod Chava? And the knowledge of the Holy Ones be na. Because. Ava and Aima. 
Yod Chava, Father, Mother, Adam and Eve above, expressing themselves through your flesh in a sexual act as male, female. And that is the power of Bina, which I told you in the lectures, the sacred name of Bina is Yod Chava Elohim. And Yod Chava Elohim rules the left column of the tree of life. The left column of the tree of life, Kabbalistically as stated, relates to the serpent. The tempting serpent. Which is your flesh, which is your blood, which is your skin. Which is your wife or your husband and the very sexual act. That without aroused is inviting you to be an animal. But if you remember your God, and then you become a human being and withdraw from the sexual act without losing the power. And that's what we sell. We said, thanks to Jah, I didn't fall. But who is Jah? Jah is Jod He in that. And that's why the throat, you had to vocalize a mantra. So Yod Chava or Ja in synthesis will help you. And that's why as a single you vocalize mantras or in the very sexual act you vocalize mantras too. The simple one is the S. The power of the fire that helps you to transmute because God talks to your throat in the very sexual act. And this is how Moses is born. From the waters. Remember that the gospel of Christ states. You have to be born again by the power of the spirit and the water. The Ruach works through you in the water. Because in the beginning the spirit of God, the Ruach Elohim, was floating upon the face of the waters. In the very sexual act. If when you do that, you don't fornicate. You transmute. And then Moses is born from the waters. Moses is that willpower. That is born in Yesod. In Mizrahim. That is translated as Egypt. Egypt, Mizrahim. Is our physicality. This is how Moses is born. And how it develops. This is how the archetype develops in anybody. And enters into the world of Netzach. And finally in Tifereth. That's why when we talk about Moses, we talk about Yesod. We talk about Hod. We talk about Netzach and Tifereth. And even Geburah. When he is ascending to liberate Israel. So he says how is this archetype related with many forces? Because it's willpower. That we need to develop. But the beginning of that is to fear Yod Chava. That's why when you reach that level. Which is Tifereth. And you have your astral body, your mental body, your causal body already developed. You have your robes, your sacred solar robe as a priest. Then you face your own inner God. And then you feel shame because you know that before reaching that level, you were a fornicator. Was Moses. He remembers also that he killed an Egyptian in Malkut. And all of you and all of us have to do that. We have to kill an Egyptian in Malkut in order to develop. That Egyptian is precisely our own physicality. Because here in Egypt, in this Mizrahim physical world, 
we feed our ego, our idols, and we start, have to start annihilating that Egypt, which means that individual that likes to fornicate. This is the only way to go up. But first, Moses has to be born from the waters. Remember that he is born from two individuals that are worshipping yod a priest and a priestess of Levi. So, Before going into Job, let me remind you that according to Kabbalah, this Moses <coughs> represents the true Adam into the image of God when he reaches the earth. But before that, the Sohar states, he's, he is a reincarnation of Abel, the first son of Adam and Eve. That soul, Tifereth, which was an embryo, very weak, and that was killed by Cain, the mind. And according to the development of the initiation, when Abel resurrects from the dead, thanks to alchemy, Moses reincarnates again, or that archetype, and he's called Seth, the third son of Adam and Eve. That reincarnation means more development of willpower into another level. The book of Sohar states also that Moses is a reincarnation in Noah. But Noah, of course, is another development of that willpower through initiation. Do not fall into the mistake of reading literally the book of Sohar and thinking that Abel reincarnated in Moses, or I mean in, in, in Seth, and Seth into Noah, and Noah into Moses. Because when Moses appears, he's taking the direct path. Noah represents those individuals that reach the second birth that have Japhet, Shem, and Ham, the three children of the three bodies, astral, mental, and causal bodies developed in Noah. That's a level. But Moses appears after Noah. And of course, there are other developments there that the book of Genesis speaks of other of the archetype, which is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that we already mentioned in other lectures, are related with Chesed, Geburah, and Tifereth, the monad of each one of us. So these are degrees, initiations, that we developed in order to reach that level, or higher level, called Moses, in the Mount of Sinai, receiving the power of God and going down into Malkut in order to perform the exodus. So, in other words, are the incarnation of the different aspect of God in different levels. You see, this is how you call reincarnation. Of course, when one reincarnates, reincarnates Neshama, all the archetypes in one body, is represented by what we call in Kabbalah, Moses Sabaot, the army of Moses, that collects all the attributes, all the archetypes in Malkut, and go directly into the higher level of the left uh, column of the tree of life, which is called Yolchava Elohim. This is how you understand it. And of course, that transformation of incarnation of forces of the tree of life in the physical body of the initiate 
reaches the higher level, which is the level of job. That job represents the physicality of the initiate. In this case, job represents the physicality of Moses. Because Moses is Tifereth, always. Moses is above, Tifereth, talking face to face to God. But below Moses, he has his physicality. Which the Sohal says, Job was one of the advisors of the Pharaoh. And we explain about that in other lectures. And that's why in the book of Sohar or in the Bible you find the book of Job that states, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The word Shama is written with the same letters of Moses, but backwards. There is Shama. So in other words, with that is hidden the mystery of Moses. Because Moses through that that is saying Job, which is the same Moses, is saying that. Yodhava gave and Yodhava has taken away. Blessed be the name of Yodhava, which is the top of the left column of the tree of life. Related with a serpent that descends. And then he says, Behold, happy is the human being whom Elah corrects. Elah is the feminine aspect. Therefore, the chastisement we wrote between quotations there, Kamaduro in Sanskrit, which is a karma that cannot be negotiable, that you have to paint in your own skin. Do not despise. Shaddai el Chai is the power of sex, is the power of God in Yesod. If you read this book of Job, you will see how Job is sick, having a sickness in his own skin. Now I ask you, why is he having that sickness in his own skin, in his own flesh? Because he's pain, he come aduro. It's the last step. I always explain that. We always have stated that. That's the last step to pay that. Because that the sin against the Holy Ghost. You pay that only with death. But that death is a process, an initiatic process of Moses, which is the first through Job, which is the physical body. This is how you have to see it. Another aspect of this great uh, archetype called Moses is Joshua, which means Savior. But Joshua is related with Yesod and Malkut as well, but in a higher aspect. Joseph is what in Buddhism we call the Bodhicitta, and is symbolized by the moon. Because Tifereth, Moses, is symbolized by the sun, S-U-N. And you know, the moon is in process of awakening, which is the consciousness that we have here below. We will say that some of us have our moon, a new moon. New means no light. Others that start working is in crescendo. Right? The moon is going up. So, when the moon is full, it's because it reflects all of the light of the sun in the moon, in the, in the consciousness, in other words. That's why, when somebody reaches that level, which is a completely illuminated being in the physical plane, he's called Joshua, a savior. Because he is reflecting all of the light of the solar absolute through him as a full moon. And that's why in Kabbalah, a full moon is called yod he bar he complete completion. Hmm? To, to reach that level is, is the goal. And that's why our own particular Joshua, 
the one that is always together with Moses is another archetype. He lived with a consciousness. Now we have to work to develop, to incarnate. You see the word incarnation there? That's the word incarnation. That's why it's very demanding. That's why when we read in, or, or we see in the TV or on the website saying, oh, I am the reincarnation of this, of that. He says, do people understand what reincarnation is? You know? It's not to be born again like the animals. Anybody returns here in a new body, that's logical. But to incarnate the forces of the tree of life, it's another thing. That's why Krishna says, incarnation is only for gods, not for animals. So, you find in the next graphic, the Hobbes of Har explains. Job used the word Shama there, which has the same letter as Moses, Moshe, to show that Moses is willing to convert the outsiders. The outsiders are, are us, which are not in the tree of life, but outside of the tree of life. Remember that we were kicked out of Eden. So we are the outsiders, the fornicators. And that hereafter, he will reincarnate in Malkut. And appear again to the archetypes of Israel in order to proclaim and make known the Shekinah, the Divine Mother, Kundalini. These words of Job also refer to the time when the archetypes of Israel in captivity, in Malkut, will perceive they were naked or devoid of the secret doctrine, and therefore said, Yodhava hath given, Yodhava hath taken away. May the name of Yodhava be blessed. Because when those archetypes were in the world of Atziluth, they were enjoying the light, as you know. But when we descended to develop, we lose that. So in that level, we were receiving, we were given. But when we descend below and fornicate, Yodhavad took it away. Because God cannot mingle with fornication. Now, in relation with this passage that we are reading here of the Zohar, many Kabbalists that are not initiates, that are only intellectual Kabbalists, they think that Moses will reincarnate. And that's why there's a, this is precisely the confusion, the mistake. They're not talking about Moses, that master that came, that accomplished his mission many thousand years ago. He did his mission. He's already done. Now, we had to develop our own particular Moses to reincarnate that archetype in us in order for him to repeat the same thing in Malkut. Because the archetypes of Israel are in slavery right now, in each one of us. This is how we have to understand this. Because if we do not understand this, we, we follow in many mistakes, like the Christians that are waiting for the second coming of Christ. When he came already, physically, as an archetype, in order to give the knowledge. Now we have to develop our own particular one. Same with Moses, same with Buddha, same with other archetypes that did the great work. This is how we, we understand reincarnation. You see? Moses has reincarnated or had reincarnated many times in many individuals. Moses was reincarnated in Samael on the or. But he saw particular individual Moses. Remember the transfiguration of Jesus. He appears with his own particular Moses and Elijah. If you don't know how to read Kabbalistic alchemically, you fall into many mistakes. Understand that any personage in the Bible is an archetype that we have within and that we need to develop. Gnostically speaking. The next graphic, we find with respect to Moses, his death was not due to fornication. 
We're talking now about the master that was incarnated 1,000 years ago. That was the scene of Adam, of course, fornication. But was brought about through the operation of a mysterious initiatic power, which is the power of resurrection. Because when Moses finishes his work, then the initiate incarnates Bina, the Holy Spirit, the third Logos, as a resurrected master. Because that is the level that Moses reached. As an archetype, he was showing that. That, as the, that is the last level that Moses reaches. But after that are more levels. But our own particular Moses has the, 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 the task to take us to that level. Moses, Tifereth, th through initiation, separated himself from his wife, Malkut, physicality, and attached himself to the divine, Shekinah, his divine mother, while in the body. That's why we say, we have to die here now with the power of the Shekinah. And I live in all the egos when we reach the higher level of Moses, which is the incarnation of the Shekinah completely in him, while physically alive. But in order to incarnate the higher aspect of Binah, which is Jehovah Elohim, he needs to die physically. He needs to pay in his own skin the sin of fornication. That's why it is written, and after death, he became united with Binah, the great mysterious being, the Holy Spirit, who is above and, and in all. Above all and in all. All the separate grades and degrees of a spiritual life form one great and vast whole. So hard. That's why we read that tradition confirms this statement, which is corroborated by scripture. And Yodhavah spoke to Moses, the Bodhisattva Tifereth, face to face, as a man speaks unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the Bodhicitta, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Exodus. What is that tabernacle? The sexual organs, of course. The way in which we are walking here. That's why in the next graphic, we mention the Bodhicitta, which is related with Joshua. Which is Yesod Malkut. Behold here the Bodhicitta here in between the two columns of good and evil, of the tree of life, completely illuminated. The explicit signification of which is that Joshua, Yesod Malkut, the Bodhicitta, through though he did not escape physical death enjoy that union of the higher and lower natures that enable him to live the higher and divine life with the children of Israel through their idolatry and worship of the golden calf had lost and for, forfeited. Hmm? Forfeited. That means that the rest of the children of Israel, which are us, which are not with the bodhicitta within, we are idolaters. Because we have egos within. But the one that annihilated the complete ego is a Joshua. That unites the superior nature with the inferior. Like the Master Samael on the or in his last years of life. He had the bodhicitta completely awakened. He was in a full moon. Receiving all the light of Tifereth, his inner being, his inner Moses, in other words. So that's the, the blessing of somebody that works in alchemy. So understand that parallel, Bodhicitta, Joshua, Bodhisattva, Moses. 
inside. Everybody has to develop that in his own level or their own level. That's why it is written. Those archetypes of Israel in each one of us that are idolaters and their eyes were opened and they saw that they were naked after the fornication. This refers to the archetypes of Israel when they were living amidst the mud and clay of Malkut, Mizraim, and had no knowledge, gnosis, of the secret doctrine. Therefore spoke the prophet concerning them. I have cast thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased and waxen great in fashion, and thy hair is grown, whereas thou was naked and bare. Ezekiel 16.7 So all of us are receiving that sentence of Ezekiel. If you want to to study Kabbalah, the rush way in which Ezekiel teaches, read the book of Ezekiel. You will see how he talks very clear, alchemically speaking, with sex, the cause of the fall. Genesis says, and they uh, sow fig leaves together and made themselves a prance. The meaning of these words is that man and woman will clog themselves with the frail coverings of their own sinful tendencies when they perceive themselves naked and have nothing to hide and cover what should be hidden, their sexuality. The fig tree symbolizes the feminine sexual force. To cover your sex with fig trees, that means that you are a fornicator. And the flesh that you are receiving is not a phrase of reincarnation. Because no archetype are incarnating in a fornicator. In order to incarnate your archetypes, to develop them in the higher parts of the tree of life, you have to be in chastity. You have to enter into the path to be born again. That's the meaning. That's why it is very uh, funny to read about people that think that they are reincarnations while they are fornicators. A lot of people, millions of them, that think that they are the vehicle of God. Meanwhile, they'll fornicate once a week. That means that because they fornicate once a week, they are allowed to bring the forces of God into their selves. Remember the commandment. <clears throat> the first commandment. To fear Yod is the beginning of wisdom. Is the beginning of knowledge. That's the first commandment. When you go into the book of Genesis, what is the first commandment? That is given by Elohim, by God. Written there in the book of Genesis it says, Grow and multiply. That is a sexual sentence that is wrongly translated. Because the right translation is, Grow and be a master. Or grow and be a rabbi. Because multiply and rabbi, 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 is a master. That is all means multiply. That's why many Kabbalists, because that sentence says grow and be a rabbi, but they read and multiply, they fornicate like rabbits and have many children. That is not the commandment. Because God is not going to say that. Animals grow and multiply without that commandment, without knowing that. Why are we going to repeat the same? That's ludicrous. But grow and multiply means grow and be a master, be a rabbi. By knowing this knowledge. That's the first commandment given to Adam. Which is exactly, as it says, the second one that was given in the second chapter of the book of Genesis. Again, the same commandment. But in other ways. He says, 
but of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. That means be afraid of that. Yeah, fear. It's the same. But it's given to them when the division of sexes is going to happen. Because the hermaphrodite or the androgynous Adam was growing and multiplying and doing the work. But when the division of sexes happen, he says, okay, now the serpent can tempt them. So let me repeat again the first commandment. You shall not eat from the fruit. You are growing and being a master now through sexual alchemy, but now that you are divided in sexes, you might fall into the mistake of thinking that you can grow by fornicating and not. Don't eat of that fruit. Same. Why? Because the first commandment says, well, you shall love thy God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your strength, and the neighbor as thyself. That's the first commandment. Same thing. In synthesis, you know, given by Moses in different steps in order for us to understand. But we read the book of Genesis, first chapter, and we say, grow and multiply. Oh, let us fornicate. You shall not eat for the fruit. Well, what is that? And they said, oh, the knowledge. We, we have not put into our minds all the knowledge. It's only, only the knowledge that I have. And justify our own ways in different ways. And the same commandment is given different times. The same one. That's why in the next graphic we find and your have Elohim made unto Adam and his wife coats of skin and clothed them. That's the other aspect, the other symbol which I spoke in the beginning. Now, through alchemy, when you already know the work, you start clothing yourself with the solar bodies. Because all of us have lunar bodies, protoplasmic bodies, animal bodies, so we need immortal bodies. And the only way to create them is by utilizing the sexual energy of El Shaddai in the right way, which is chastity. The garment, solar bodies, with which Israel covers himself is symbolized in the rightful robe with its fringes and borders and also the phylacteries and sandals. And therefore, Scripture said, Hagoroth, cuts of covering, here is used in order to distinguish the rightful solar robe and therefore it is written. Rightful means chastity. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh. The thigh always points to the sex. And make thy glory and majesty appear when you transmute the sexual energy. Referring to the Shema. You see the two words there? The other words of uh, Moses there. Shem. Repeated when each one, priest and priestess, are arrayed in the rightful robe. When may the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands. Hands is Yad. Meaning in the sexual act is when you take the sword of God in your hands. The flaming sword, remember, that the cherubim, which are the angels of Yesod, were brandished the flaming sword in order to avoid the impure people to enter. That sword is the fire of Geburah in the blood that goes up and down in all your body. That's the fire and goes down into your sex. And tempt you. You want to enter into Eden. Eden is voluptuousness. Sexuality. You want to enter. Defeat me. Here is the sword. But many of us. Are defeated by the sword of fire. The flaming sword. When fornicating. When reaches the orgasm. 
and we don't enter into Eden. That is the meaning of that. That is in their hands. What hands? In the very sexual act. Is when men and women, the Sohar states that when you are in a sexual act, you are fighting with Samael, the angel of Geburah. And if you defeat him, he just touch your leg, and then you are disjoined with the leg. And one Kabbalist says, it is easy to see, because that angel touches the liver of the man and the spleen of the woman. In other words, Jacob, right leg, and Rachel, or Raquel is the name, uh, left leg. How is it? How an angel can touch both legs at the same time? In the sexual act. Because when they are in the sexual act, they are front to front. Not back to back, front to front. The left leg in front of the right leg of Jacob is Rachel, his wife. And he is defeating that in the very sexual act. And therefore, he touches Hod and Netzach at the same time. That's the power of Samael, Geburah. But Jacob defeats him in the very sexual act with his wife, Rachel. Do you understand that? It's easy to see when you know alchemy. Now here you find the symbol of Samael, which is a five-pointed star related with the book of Revelation. When he is descending to give us, or when he is developing in us as an archetype as well, because Samael is another archetype within. And out of his mouth, we said the mouth is Adam, the throat. That is the word. And then he initiates. And out of his mouth, Adam Tifreit, goes the logos, the word, in other words, a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations. All those egos that we have within, with the power of the word. And he, the Logos, the word, shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he, the Logos, Geburah, treads in Yesod. Because Geburah is also in Scorpio, in the sexual organ. Divine praise of the fairness and wrath of the El Shaddai. The Almighty God is the translation. Which is sex. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh, which is the assault sex, a name written, King of Kings, Malachim Melech. The Malachim is precisely the angels of Tifereth. Melech means that he rules all of them because he's a Logos. And Lord of Lords, Adonim Adonai, Malkut, because the name of God in Malkut is Adonai, and Adonai is the holy name of God in Malkut. And that's why you find Samael here, Geburah, and Adonai here written in Hebrew, related with Malkut, because Geburah relates with the two forces, Malkut and Geburah, the blood. That's the symbol of Samael. That's why we said in all the lectures, the symbol of Samael is the, is the five-pointed start because Geburah is the fifth Sephira. Here you find it. If you want to know the symbol of Samael. In the very bottom it says, yod he vav he. It's a positive symbol related with the master that is a patriarch of this organization. Now let us read to finish what is written in the Zohar to understand more what we are explaining here. In the beginning, Ravi Hiya spoke and said, the beginning of wisdom is fear of yod Chava. Good understanding have all doing them. His praise is standing forever. Psalm 111 verse 10. 
The beginning of wisdom has reference to Malkut, the great object of wisdom, namely to raise from Malkut and elevate us into the higher and divine life, as it is said. Open ye to me gates of righteousness, chastity. I enter into them. I thank Jah. This is understandable now, right? Malkut is the entrance, the main entrance, which is your physicality. This Malkut is the gate or way of Yod Chava, through which everyone must pass in order to attain gradually this life and live in the presence of the heavenly king. Before this, however, there are several other gates on the upward course which must be passed through each with their bolts and bars that have to be unloosed. Yet, Malkut, the last of which is that called the fear of the Lord, it is the one only gate of access. We have to pass many gates, but the first one is Malkut. If we are not opening this Malkut, don't think that you're going to open others. People think that they can't jump into the walls of Eden and to appear there. Here I am. I didn't enter for the gate. You know, no, you cannot jump the walls of Eden. There's one gate, and that gate is in Malkut. That gate is your sod. It's a skin. It's a flesh. It's a blood in the sexual act. That's the gate in your physicality. There are in a scripture two beginning, two beginnings, Bereshith, mentioned and are united into one, namely, the fear of Yolhava and the beginning of wisdom. Both are one and the same, and never found disjoined from each other, as it is written, that they, men and woman in the sexual act, may know that thou alone, whose name is Yolhava, art the most high over all of the earth, Malkut. And the very sexual act. Why is the first gate, Malkut, called the fear of the Lord? Because it, Malkut, is the skin, the sense of touch. It's a tree of good or evil. When they live uprightly in chastity, in their skin, sense of touch in your soul, sex, is a tree of good to them. If unjustly, in fornication, a tree of evil, it, Malkut, is the gate or portal through which all blessing, spiritual or temporal, comes. The words good understanding, Bina, have all doing them, refer to those gates in Malkut, namely men and women, which in your salt sex, as aforesaid, are one and the same in the sexual act. This is the only way to reincarnate the higher parts of your inner God within you. And this is how, when you incarnate that if those parts were incarnated in other individuals that self-realize them, that develop them, it is obvious a reincarnation, but in your own level. Do you understand that? That means that you are not going to be the first one to incarnate that. Because other individuals enter into the path in previous lives, in previous races, and did that incarnation. So in other words, Moses reincarnated many times through many individuals. Those that are waiting for the reincarnation of Jesus of Nazareth, let me tell you that that archetype that he represented 2,000 years ago had reincarnated many times, or has reincarnated many times, through many individuals. Those that are waiting for the reincarnation of Samael, or the return of Samael on Beor, let me tell you, 
he has to reincarnate in each one of us because it's also an archetype as we are studying here. This is the way that we understand the law of reincarnation. It's related with the, all the archetypes of Yehidah. In Yehidah is the Messiah that has to reincarnate if we take the direct path. In Haya, we have Abba and Aima that reincarnate in those that take the direct path. The other incarnations of Ruach and Neshama can happen also in different individuals. But the only one that reincarnates here is Nefesh. And is not reincarnation, but return. Because Nefesh is the animal soul. Do you have questions? Yeah? Yeah. Jesus of Nazareth is a reincarnation of Joshua, it says. Why they say that? But Joshua and Jesus are written with the same letters. Joshua means Savior. Jesus means Savior too, but Jesus is just English, coming from Yeshua. It's the same one. You know what I mean? Obviously, Joshua is that archetype that represents the Savior, because his name means Savior. But he's not uh, doing a main... What you said there, uh, action there with Moses, because Moses is showing his own development, his own archetype, right? Moses represents the development of that archetype. And the rest of all the archetypes are with him, but are not so obvious like him because he is representing Moses. But Jesus comes to represent the Savior. And then his development is in relation with Joshua. That's why it is stated that he is a reincarnation of Joshua. Hmm? But it's the same thing. Meaning that that archetype in him is more obvious, is more explicit. So when you read the Bible, you have to analyze and think. This master, this prophet, represents an archetype. Let us see what archetype in relation with what Sephirah I am reading here. Because that archetype is within me as well. For instance, Shamuel. Do not confuse this name with Samael. Because Samael is written with Samech and Shamuel with Shin. Shamuel represents the perfection of Hod and Netzach that comes after Moses. Moses means the perfection of Netzach, but he is Tifereth. This is the, if you study in Kabbalah and alchemy, you understand all these similitudes and relationships. Yes? Yeah, the fifth rib is Geburah. Obviously, when you read the book of Samuel 1 and 2, you have to understand what are you reading. Because there you find the, the, three, uh, the, the story of the three kings. Shaol, or Sheol, you know, but Sheol, which means hell, David, and Solomon. Those are all the three steps that you have to understand. Because when you talk about the Messiah of Yehidah, he is a son of Joseph and a son of David. Steps. First, Joseph. Chastity. Purity. Then David, which is harder because it's the annihilation of 10,000. Remember, Sheol killed, killed 1,000, but David 10,000. To reach that is very high. Do we have questions here? Yes, I hope it is recorded because it's alone. It says, when we incarnate Moses, we have to be a killer. Yeah, literally. 
psychologically speaking, yes. Because Moses descends in order to kill all the unfaithful ones, like Muhammad. Those unfaithful ones are not outside, inside of you. Your ego, your idols, that we have thousands of them. Moses had to descend and to annihilate them little by little, systematically, until reaching the promised land. When he's close to the promised land, he has to die also to pay the last sin, which is fornication, in order to enter. And this is what many uh, Kabbalists or initiates don't understand. Why Moses died? He didn't enter the promised land. No, he is showing with that death that only with death you kill death. Because the sin of fornication, which is in him, because he is a reincarnation of many other archetypes, Adam, Abel, Seth, Noah, he has to pay that. He paid with death. Then he enters into the promised land. And everybody has to do that. Another question? Yes. Are you able to recommend a good source to look for a Hebrew English Bible for the study of Kabbalah? I do not know where to search. And when I ask rabbis, they don't reply because I'm not a part of their tradition. Well, yeah. Uh, to find a Bible that uh, is not, uh, I mean, that is advisable. Uh, go into the internet and uh, download the Blue Bible. It says Blue Bible explains the different ways. Blue Letter. Yeah, Blue Letter Bible. There's many other of them there. In the, it's a website. There are many. You cannot download them because it's a website. But maybe you can buy the Bible. I have a Bible written in Hebrew, Greek, and English. It might exist that letter Blue Bible. Yes? The adornment of Shekinah. Yeah. Well, Shekinah is the Divine Mother. Kundalini in Sanskrit. Shekinah is that element that we have to awake in order to work. And obviously, in the wedding, in the Jewish wedding, that they are mentioned in Shekinah is because Shekinah only awakes between men and women in the sexual act. Of, well, when you study that with is it spoken, etc., in allegory, obviously it's related with it's related with with a lot of symbols that only those that know alchemy. Problem is that in this day and age, Christians, Jews, Muslims repeat mechanically all of those scriptures and traditions without understanding why. If they would understand that, they wouldn't fornicate. But they multiply, as I, as I said, like any other animal. Why is fornication a sin? Fornication is to reach the orgasm in the sexual act. Chastity is don't reach the orgasm and transmute, transform the energy in the sexual act between husband and wife. And that is to be a thievish or to be a thief, in other words. Adam and Eve, to know how to do alchemy. That is a secret that now is spoken publicly because humanity needs it. What exactly is alchemy? Alchemy is the way in which you work with the chemistry of your body, chemistry, related with the tree of life. Allah, el, Allah, chemi, chemistry. Okay. So what we talk today, the relation of the tree of life with all your organs, that's chemistry. Because this is what you call chemistry. When you know how to take advantage of that, you are working with Allah, alchemy. Alchemy? Or the chemistry of God, in other words, in order to develop the tree of life. Another question here? Okay, 
the meaning of that question, which is very long, is, implies no one lecture, but many lectures that are already given. Search in the website, I don't know, because I talk about the transfiguration of Jesus, the path of the Bodhisattva, is in relation with Hod, which is one of uh, the lectures, yeah, related with that transfiguration, in which Moses appears in the three tabernacles and the other archetypes, which are the disciple of Jesus, John, Peter, and James. It's already spoken. Just look in the path of the Bodhisattva because I am tired already. <laughs> My Adam is tired. But still, we can answer more questions. Here? Done. done? What about here? It's done? I don't think so. You still have to do it. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,